This weekend's been a horsemanship clinic, a colt starting clinic has been part of it. I mean, it's super important to, to ag. A lot of people have gotten away from working cattle horseback, but there's still some places, especially in this part of Arkansas, in the hills and the mountains and the forest and everything, there's places where a four wheeler or a feed truck's not gonna go. And you're still gonna have to send a cowboy up there horseback. And we are firm believers that working cattle horseback is, is the most low stress, it's the best way, it's, it's the friendliest, if you will, way that we can do it. We are concerned with our cattle's welfare. If we thought there was a better way, a, a more low stress way for us to take care of our cattle, we'd do it that way. But using horsemanship, using our horses to take care of them has proven time and time again, it, it's easier on the environment. We're not tearing up pastures, driving the truck and tractor out through it. So our grass is coming back better next year. Um, our cattle are staying quieter, so we're not running weight off of them. Well, and for me, uh, the Colt Starting Clinic go hand in hand with agriculture and the industry of Arkansas, especially because we are a major cattle producer. That is one of the big things that we do here in the state. We love the ranching side of it, but there's also a pleasure side of it. Yep. You know, the equine industry is major here in Arkansas. Just right up the road, we've got one of the racetracks, and you know, there's multiple million dollars worth of horses there. They can't make it there unless they start from the bottom, start being started as colts. You know, I feel like for us, you know, passing the knowledge and the things that we have to go with the cowboy stuff or horsemanship is just goes hand in hand. It's, you know, it's, it's generational. And uh, most Americans now are at least three generations removed from the farm. And uh, there's been a big push to get back to the farm life. And it's from people that really enjoy the culture and enjoy the idea of it, but they don't know the thing that they should because their grandparents did it, but they didn't learn it from them. And so having this opportunity to share that with them only grows and benefits our industry. And I think if, if we don't pass knowledge down from generation to generation, like Chad's gra grandpa had a really great recipe for mustache wax that he made out of bear fat, killed right here in the mountains of Arkansas. That didn't get passed down, and that's why it looks like two hyenas got the tails tied together and they're trying to split. It's fine. Okay? If, if that knowledge had been... <laughs> I held it together, you couldn't do it. And a lot of times with horsemanship and things of that nature, there's not necessarily a correct answer. There's not always one solid A, B, C, D, this is the result. And uh, you know, it's good to be able to come and get out of your comfort zone and to be willing to try something new to get the desired result that you haven't been able to find on your own. And faith-based as well, it's the same thing. You know, my wife and I, unless we can do it together and or with our kids, we don't go, we don't do it. And uh, you know, that's true in the ag industry as well as in our faith.